Hey everyone, it's Ross. Welcome to Season 2, Adventures in the Void Spacecast. This season we're talking about independent and folk science fiction tabletop role-playing games. The following is an actual play of the original Starfaring role-playing game, Classic Traveler, by Mark Miller and Games Designer Workshop. So get your vac suit on, your sidearm ready, and prepare to exit jump space. We've got money to make and worlds to explore, and we hope you'll join us on these adventures. Out here on the Imperial Fringe, it's just us veterans of the Fifth Frontier War keeping the space lanes moving. Free traders like us, still willing to evade the pirates, the terrorists, the zealots, the criminals. They prey on these war-torn ruins of a hundred worlds. They call us travelers. We aren't liked, but we're needed. We use our skills we learned in the service to operate starships and earn a buck. We ain't looking for trouble, but it always finds us. When it does, it'll find us ready. I got a three, uh, which would be Marcello, which doesn't make any sense. So it's going to be, uh, this time it's going to be Coleman. Coleman, what happened okay. last time? All right. So last time we started off in uh, the bar in Debar, uh, the bar in Dabari, uh, finishing up trying to conclude a deal with Donne, the bartender, for some advanced vehicle parts. Um, but we we balked at it because his price was way too high, and we did not have the cash uh, to really make a good deal of that. And then uh, from there, we stayed at the bar, with, and a few of us went and uh, met some other travelers who were the crew of the Gypsy Moth, uh, a 400-ton, uh, is it Far Trader, I think? Or... If it's 400 tons, it would be known as a Fat Trader, usually. Fat Trader, okay. Um, uh, <clears throat> but travelers like us, uh, and then two of them in particular, uh, Pascal and Sterling, were the two that I, I we we talked to and Sterling uh I, as I recall threw a slur at the Aslan group that were also at the bar uh, but he also told us um, about the the best way to get jobs at the hunting lodge on the bar was uh, finding a noble that would kind of offer us or sponsor us. Um, and then after that, we uh, kind of discussed whether we would be able to uh, use our ship cannon to hunt the two-ton bears um, on Debar, but decided that it was it was a little bit too risky, uh, and we were not that desperate, and so we ended up leaving Debar without any cargo and. Uh, we're going to make the jump to Flammarion, and then as we as we left orbit, um, <laughs> we got a uh, a threatening message uh, that ended up turn it turned out to be a prank by the the crew of the Gypsy Moth, who then escorted us to a safe distance, where we then proceeded to jump, um, and uh, we we made a safe jump to Flammarion, but due to I think a miscalculation in Coleman's navigation, uh, we are, we arrived a little bit further out in the system than anticipated, um, which turned out to be a little bit provident because we received a hail from a uh, ISS courier uh, who was under attack by uh, I think it was was it a modified liner. Um, Okay, and uh, anyway, so we were we were outgunned, but at at Books's suggestion, um, we ended up creating a, a a communications diversion and were able to send over a a threatening message. Essentially, you know that you know the Imperial fleet is on the way. You better flee, or you're going to get blasted into uh, the void. Uh, and they bought it. And we were able to go and 
render some aid to the to the scout courier, and then we basically both flew into um, the uh, Star Diver. Uh, wait, Star Diver Trading Company is the is the high port in Flamarian, I think. Uh, Star Star Town Liberty. Star Town Liberty. Okay, wait. Oh wait. Oh wait. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm looking at wrong. Yeah, Star Town Liberty. Um. Where um, our our former crewmate uh, Nile departed, um, we threw a little celebration for him, and then we were going to have some well earned downtime and do some gambling <laughs> for sure. Well earned when we can actually get it. Ah, Captain, you're grumpy. <laughs> All right, so um, a couple other things. Let's take our time with this. Uh, so, you know, just uh, uh, big picture, uh, Chris. No, no, no. Actually, I'm going to pick on uh, um, Andrew. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Andrew, like big picture what's been going on like you know like kind of the big broad strokes of what's happened to the crew of the lady of mercia for for thomas a sec so uh, big picture so we've been doing a lot of running around uh trying to stay afloat and just procure enough money um to make a, a payment that's coming up and again just just trying to find jobs um so I don't even know where to begin. Um, Chapman and myself joined the crew, um, you know, like half, like they had did, done some adventures before. Um, I'm really bad with the names of places, but let's see. There was a terrorist um, involved. Well, Chapman and I did some of that. Um, then there was um, just a lot of a lot of planet hopping, doing smaller jobs, uh, trying to sell some liquor that or some beer that we got. Um, there was this Viking like group of people that were at war with each other, pretty much, and we helped restore the uh, you know the leader to power. Um, just a lot of. A lot of jumping around, trying to make a buck, um, and yeah, we just uh, we just ended up being in the good, doing something that put us in the good grace of the uh, Imperial fleet. So right now we're just um, kind of hanging out after uh, you know they're doing a good job. Uh, well, you heard the recap from last week. That's kind of like the big picture. Sorry, I don't remember the names of all the the places and whatnot. Yeah, um, Alex. I'm gonna add a couple things. I think might be good context. It might be for me at least. We're in a fairly backwater part of the galaxy, called the Bowman Arm. I think we've agreed our long-term plan is to get a better. Uh, uh, drive that can make bigger jumps so that we can leave this area. I guess technically we could if we do it one system at a time. It's just that we would have to travel through some pretty nasty places. So we would like a bigger drive so that we can just skip right past those. And boy, is that expensive. I think all we've acquired in like our collective greater level assets has been a gun for our ship, which is not even like the kind that works well for pirates in space and a uh, humanitarian diplomat who has now joined our crew. We have and the promise Ron... of another gun, of a real yeah. gun, an actual ship turret weapon. Uh, we if we can make it, to, yeah, but we have to make it to Bowman. And uh, do you want me to post Ross a traveler map link to oh, yeah. um, traveler chat? That's, that's actually a great point. Yes, please, if you could. And... Um, I don't know if you did that last time, uh, which actually I think you're already familiar with it, Tim, but um, yeah. that is basically good to just have up. Um, now, you know, 
maybe stating the obvious going into the wiki leak, you might get spoilers. Or you might like see something that you're going to see me tweak because uh, I'm going to use that lore. So, um, but uh, yeah, Tom, uh, Thomas, he's, uh, Chris is going to post a thing called travelermap.com. And uh, if you type in. Oh, I've, I've got it. It's the link will take you right to where we are. Great. Uh, you, it's just like a, drop, yeah. dropping a pen. Basically, you'll see a zoomed in map of the region that we're in at the moment. Yeah, and just for context, I'll just bring it up here, just, you know, but this is not a living map where you can click and drag it around on your end uh, to see things, but uh, trying to keep some notes up. Lost. Yeah, so um, what I was going to say, Thomas, is uh, you can see here this black space where it doesn't have the red boundary. The red boundary is the Imperium, which is civilized humanity, sort of, just to generalize a little bit, and you ain't there. You're out in the middle of nowhere, uh, outside of the border of, of your polity that you fought fought and bled for. So, I'm looking at the map right now. Where are we? Are we in Reft, Corridor? Where are we? Okay, so then it didn't do a link uh, directly it, to our location. Probably the easiest thing to search for would be Bowman. B-O-W-M-A-N. And that will zoom you into the Bowman arm and the big black space yeah. there. Um, each of the each of these hexes is one parsec, three point two light years across. Okay. Just for a sense of scale. And um, while you're looking at that, let's uh, I, I'll, I'll talk about Thomas's character here in a minute. R, right? Lamar, yeah. Or Lamar, okay. Lamar, can't read my own writing. Uh, but let's uh, let's kind of just do a little roll call here, uh, starting with uh, who is Klaus Bellamy. Klaus Bellamy is the old man. Um, he's he's ostensibly the captain of this vessel, the Lady of Mercia. Um, uh, the crew are. Uh, a crew that has been together since, uh, in one form or another, since the Frontier War, and you will have been one of our companions, I imagine. Um, and uh, Bellamy is the one, uh, he uh, took a merchant career, so um, he's, I believe at this point, 47 or 48 years old, uh, with, uh, with, uh, sort of a gaunt look and uh, bags under his eyes and always trying to think about the next angle and annoyed uh, with anything that gets in the way of just making money because we have to make the payments on this baby or we're through. And uh, so while all these young people are going to be hanging out in the casino and looking for a good time, I hope they... <laughs> I'm gonna always be putting a bug in their ear to like look for an angle themselves and see if there's any way we can get a little more extra scratch because we need it. So that's, um, I don't know, that's Bellamy. Uh, he's, his best skills are Cutlass and Vac Suit. So he has pretensions above, above his actual station perhaps and he's bad at talking to people. Just to skip ahead, uh, my thought is probably Lamar uh, was a uh, fourth officer in the Merchant Marine, and probably knew Bellamy. That's that's my thought. Right okay, before yeah. the task right, force got organized, may have served uh, together. Yeah, and then uh, the the Lady of Mercia. Uh, tell us about. Uh, let's see if I can. Oh, the two hundred ton. There we go. Two hundred ton, Pipe A free trader capable of jump one, which means it can move one hex uh, per jump. And uh, it uh, has 83 tons of cargo space, I believe. Um, a uh, type two uh, computer <laughs> uh, that can calculate its own jump routes. Can hold and hold uh, four programs. Can hold four once. programs. Um, <laughs> And weighs 
two tons. <laughs> well, more than that. <laughs> but yeah. We have, to, um, we have to buy minutes for it from the convenience store like every week. <laughs> <laughs> Charge it with punch cards that have minutes installed on them. Um, anyway, it's... Uh, and there, and there's a little dog uh, who lives on the ship, and her name is Lady as well. Um, and uh, and and yeah, I mean, he mentioned our plan. My plan is, I would love to go. I mean, we need to be moving. Um, we need to be moving, uh, uh, trailing and coreward, and not. I'm uh, oh, sorry, trailing, just trailing, which is basically east, um, spinward is death spinward is doom spinward is no <laughs> we want to avoid moving anywhere west of where we are again yeah um that's but my like, that, that's like the godfather they just keep getting pulled back well, in well, they're, we'll they're see well, don't, it now. hopefully that's not a prophecy from the game from the game master <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so anyway um you also have a big dog uh person a big dog person named lothak okay. who does not know how to operate as a starship crew member at all but is makes up for it with a lot of enthusiasm and is just generally nice to be around so there's there's that and then uh the first mate of the vessel that's me i'm perseus chapman i was an enlisted marine i did not get very far i have a lot of brains but not enough education i'm pretty scrappy um I don't have, I don't really have, like, special skills. I mean, I, I got, in addition to the standard uh, Traveler set, Engineering. No, is that already all one of them? Electronic, that was my one that I got. Um, yeah, first mate, I, Andrew mentioned this earlier, that Perseus Chapman, as well as Andrew's character, um, uh, books, the two of us were part of a different crew previously, but we joined this one a few adventures ago. And um, I'm a lot more optimistic than our captain. Um, I try to have a little bit more fun. You can see from the image that uh, I got my ears blown off during the war. So I have, that's my cybernetic thing. Um, I used to uh, spend a lot more time during our hyperspace jumps, either gambling or in band practice or dueling. But now I find myself uh, hitting the books because I'm trying to improve my education score. <laughs> I wonder if books is trying to help you or something like, <laughs> I don't know. That's another thing. These are classic Could traveler characters. <laughs> and as such, we all kind of suck. We're, we're, we, we all are not that great at anything, really. Uh, with a couple of exceptions, but our exceptions are just like, oh, you can do that thing as opposed to nobody else can do it. Like, you know, so it, it makes things more fun. Seat of the pants. So yeah, uh, friends with uh, uh, with with Chapman is uh, is books. Tell us about books. Yeah, um, so books is one of those guys who definitely uh, was the smartest out of the people he hung out with. Um, hung out with a lot of like ruffians, got into a lot of trouble, but would always use his uh, mind to get out of it. Um, then he went to the army and had like a big chunk of his head blown off and that kind of humbled him out a little bit um and he has like a metallic mesh um other half of his like back half of his head um uh, because of that so he's he's fairly quiet um unless if you know if he gets to know somebody he'll open up a bit more but he's kind of like that guy that's always quietly watching and observing everything that's going on um that's him so uh yeah um you but know he has I, crazy ideas that work out sometimes yeah i feel like <laughs> books is always the guy that everybody's always trying to run the conservative option and books is always like or we could just kill them or or we could steal <laughs> it or you know, like, and then everybody's like wait a second actually we may have to do that uh, <laughs> usually they disagree with books, well, <laughs> but every and, once in a while they're like, "We have to do the books option." <laughs> I feel like I need to, to to step in, and and you you uh, even though you gave us the rundown, you skipped your own uh, stroke uh, of genius last session. Yeah, um, uh, 
<laughs> but yes, uh, it was his idea to instead uh, to send that stuff, and and then we ended up it ended up not only working but got us a huge in with uh, the locals, the local authorities. Like we rescued these scout personnel, so yeah, awesome. gave them medical attention and everything else, and it wouldn't have happened without Book's idea. So everybody else was ready to just get out of there. Uh, and then we've got Marcello. Yeah, uh, Marcello's is a 27-year-old guy. He's uh, skinny and a little bit, uh, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, let's just say he's smoke. <laughs> and uh, he's got a, a big head of hair. He's um, He had one term in the Marines before he got booted out. So uh, right now he's 27 years old. Uh, he enjoys being on the ship. Uh, he tries to be a good crew member. Um, you know, he's, uh, I think one thing that the shipmates turn to him for sometimes is like his computer skills, uh, which are not amazing, but, uh, but he's got them and, uh, he's, he's trying to, trying to learn a little bit and, and pick up a little here and there and try to get better. Um, he's, uh, he's got some smarts and he's got some facility, like talking to people and stuff like that. But, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's just kind of like this average dude, really. Um, Marcello doesn't really like to get into fights, but somehow he always finds himself, well, with this group anyway, in fights. So, yeah, he does what he can with his, uh, his shotgun and, and so on. Um, yeah, no, he's, uh, he's a little bit, uh, I guess, uh, He's always trying to see what's what's around the corner. I think he 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 doesn't want to feel stuck in a tin can, and uh, he uh, he's always excited to you know just open the door just to just to get out there and 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 uh, to uh, find out what what's 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 around the corner. So I think that's Marcello. And you're Chi, right? Yes. Okay. My name is Chi. Okay. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you too. All right. So, uh, and then we've got uh, Coleman, who has taken also some temporary work. They've got another crew member on shore leave. Uh, and so, oh, why is it not letting me? Weird. Um... Russ, are you sharing your screen or something? Because. I um I can share the tokens uh, like that, so that should okay. pop up for you. When I oh, I see. Yes, got it. So uh, yeah, uh, tell tell us about Coleman. Uh, Coleman Sheehan's a thirty-year-old. Uh, he uh is he served a couple of terms in the army. Uh, he comes from a military family, uh, and rose through the ranks and was. Basically, he was booted out around 30 years, uh, well, about 26 years old um, as a major uh, for running a, a gambling ring in his his unit at the time. Um, he is, um, initially, he, he was kind of, a, you know, coming from a military family, he just sort of coasted on his, uh, you know, basically nepotism uh, of... And then, um, kind of, I think, got shell shocked at the the Battle of Rylanor, uh, and uh, definitely was he's he's kind of fried uh, emotionally, and and that's why he was spinward because I kind of joined I joined them on uh, what was it? Let's see, what planet? I have to look now. Uh, on Raleigh, right? I think that's where we. I met. I joined up with the crew a couple of weeks ago, um, and uh, so he's working his way. I think uh, back spinward. Uh, he's a little bit of uh, you know. He's kind of a degenerate gambler, um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, he's 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 become a again. You know, because of his experiences, he's 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 trying to find a little you know he's he's a much more serious person now um he's pretty weak um but 
pretty tough and uh, not well educated, despite the opportunities he had. But he's a, you know a reasonably sharp guy, and he's 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 fairly skilled. He's he, he's not really exceptional in anything, um, but he's got some uh, you know he's he's a good tactician, uh, has a couple of different firearm skills, and uh, you know is is comfortable in a in a you know a wheeled vehicle or a driving. He's... He's the army guy. Yeah. Uh, everybody you know. else is, uh, like, you know, spacers. And then this guy's got, like, Ford Observer 1, mechanical, uh, you know, uh, tactics 1, you know. So he's, like, the tactical, you know, s staff army officer guy. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is a... Uh, the guy that can get you things. Yeah. Um it's it's an odd skill set to sometimes have in a vacuum strapped into a chair uh, at high G's, but then when you're on a planet somewhere and you've got guns, suddenly it becomes important. It's important when it's important. Um, he said, "I'm kind of a, a degenerate." <laughs> don't put that on the resume. Like don't don't go don't don't bring that to the job interview. <laughs> but <laughs> or do I? I'm not the. You know, yeah, maybe, maybe you should. If, Why did you hire this guy? What did you see? Him? Did he, was it, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we did have the, the low birth lottery last time. I, I did forget that in my, you know, because uh, I, I I lost. Uh, I, wait, I forget who we two people split that right? Was it was it Chapman and Books? Did you wait? No, it was uh, the guy who was uh, um, Nile. Nile. Yep. Okay. Um, Nile and Books. Books also. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, so I, I was all in on, on, you know, betting on whether, you know, the, these low birth passengers were going to die or not. <laughs> By the way, uh, uh, Lamar has Medic 2. 3. Medic 3. Oh, wow. wow. Uh, yeah, I thought it was 2. Let's, let's make sure it get injured in the next couple of sessions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we know who's going to take care of the low birth passengers. Um, yes, Tom, yes, Thomas. Every time they right, take so on low birth we, we passengers, the, the, so we can fix the betting. <laughs> Not because out of concern for their lives, just so that you know we can game the system. Ah, uh, number of days since last low birth accident. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah. So then Lamar, tell us about Lamar. I don't have your artwork yet. I just have the regular traveler token. So for, okay. We'll uh, Hi guys, my name is Thomas, and my character's name is Lamar Ocean. Uh, he's a fourth officer in the Merchant Marines. He served two terms. He's 30 years old. He's a short, stocky guy with a shock of brown, curly hair and a mustache, apparently. Um, he's definitely got the porn stash going on. Uh, let's see. He's well-rounded in his uh, knowledge base. He's a vac suit two, electronics one, medic three, admin one. So he's kind of a jack of all trades in the in anything except for combat. Um, he he was in his first term. He was he botched the healing of his deck officer, and that stunted his uh, advancement, so he couldn't get any further. But he served in two terms, and on his second term during the Battle of Rhinonor, he had to shoot his uh, one of his men, Squints, because he was mind-controlled by the Zodani and was about to kill his whole crew. So we had to kill Squints, and that's going to haunt him for the rest of his days. Uh, in the same battle, he lost his left arm, so he's got a mechanical left arm. Um, he's a fairly level-headed person. He is cool under pressure, but he has to be in order to save lives. He's a medic three, so he really uh, sees himself as somebody who can help others in times of desperate need, even though he failed one miserable time to save his deck officer's life. That's also going to haunt him for the rest of his days. Um, he, he inherited some money from a rich uncle, so he's kind of loaded. I rolled a six on my uh, on on the money die so I, I got a good amount of money and I have a battle rifle and a dagger and a medical kit an electronic tool set lockpick set uh, disguise kit so he's loaded with all sorts of goodies 
Um, and he's ready to find his way back to his home planet, which I haven't decided what his home planet is yet. Apparently there's infinite number of planets he could be from, but he's trying to make his way back home just like everybody else. So Russ oh, go home ahead. is in uh, near the Mora, did we say? Roughly? Basically like capital of the Spinward Marches yeah, area. It could be Mora or anywhere Spinward toward Rylanor. Because you could also right. be just in the Rylanor uh, sector itself. Uh, but any of those worlds. Um, yeah. They can all relate to the uh, the experiences you had where you had to kill a comrade. Um, and they all saw this and now they're all in the same boat trying to find a job out here. It's one of the things where, oddly, uh, you know you can trust them, and um, probably why you can why you can get a job and work with them. All right, well here we are. Um, so, Star Town Liberty, like I said, it smells like urine and cheap perfume and cheap food. And uh, it's a cacophony of lights, neon lights and signs and noises and different gambling machines and uh, all kinds of stuff. It's just, uh, it's just an over a sensory overload. And I believe we ended at the hotel now. Um, maybe you guys want to have a little conference before you go. I got just to organize matters that some people want to go to the casino. Some people are going to go to the lawyer, which you have a contact with, uh, Isabella. Uh, and some, well, the captain wants to go look around for cargo and passengers. Um, well, I mean, actually, that's automatic. You can take whatever cargo you have. Um, you're going to try to do some speculation. I would propose you take somebody with you so we can kind of pan the camera over to you and someone else. Um, I was thinking about this last time. I, I I think as much as possible, it'd be nice to just. I mean, whatever. You know, I I. I we I can want, stay together. Keep... Is that what you're yeah. going to say? I think yeah, that's, that's fine. What I was it makes say. sense to me. What do you all think? What do you think? I I I, I like that. I mean, I just it's it's also sort of an esprit de corps thing you know just yeah. like everybody you know yeah what, what'll just, happen we'll, if we split up is is we'll go to a scene and two people will be in that scene for 40 minutes because it's too important right so it'll be hard to like switch back and forth so it'd be better just to get everybody's input plus you won't be able to give your input so yeah let's go see the lawyer together I mean, we had we had been stuff. saying that we're in communication with headpieces or whatever but it, it sort of doesn't always make sense to have to mess around with that so yeah. no yeah, uh, okay. What do you think, Books? Yeah, I think that um, I agree. We should stay together. Um, as you said, there's, like, it's an important decision, um, or the decisions that we'll be making will be important, so we probably should stay together, because otherwise it would be a, like... Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to feel i don't want anybody I, I don't want to feel held back like if i feel like oh i need to somebody should go over there like maybe sometimes marcello should go out and have a conversation outside the door with a cigarette with somebody and have that be a scene that's perfectly sensible but i'm just talking about you know i don't want to take separate trips to whole big separate locations you know i think there's good in and out of re out of game uh reasons to to yeah. not do that no that makes sense to me for sure. So that being said, you know, um, I'm willing to, the captain knows everybody wants to blow off some steam. <laughs> so I suggest we head to the casino first before we uh, try anything else more ostensibly serious. All right. Uh, let me just see real quick what, um, so you're at a hotel I think we agreed last time this was going to be a casino hotel. That that I am I making that up in my brain? I can't remember. I I don't remember one way or the other. It sounds right. All right. I don't. I assume when the captain comes down to find us all at our continental breakfast being served. Yes. Like, <laughs> we hired a new sawbones for the cruise. Yes. 
Uh, and, yeah, and you know the you know Captain Bellamy, um, uh, Lamar, yeah. and so yeah, Continental. Lamar. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Lamar. A very capable crewman, from what I remember. Haven't seen you since the war. Has it been that long already? Yeah, a few more bags under the eyes, a few more gray hairs in the old headpiece. Yeah, it feels like just yesterday we were mowing down some mindless hive mind creatures, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, sorry, the encounters in this book are so smutty, I have to re-roll them. <laughs> <laughs> At that problem last time. But yeah, this Continental Breakfast uh, is a treat given some of the options you've had on various worlds so far. And uh, it's included uh, with a voucher. Um, and the place smells like wet carpet and recent puke uh, and, um, and fried food. And there are a bunch of gambling machines and tables and um, you can see some tourists here doesn't look like you see any travelers and I'm trying to find give me just a moment it's going to take me a second um, somebody remind me while he's looking up do you, I, I'm pretty sure I, we already signed on for some cargoes that were going to Asteltine. I believe that was the first order of business. Was yeah, it was out. like the first thing I did when I got off the ship. Okay. Uh, yeah. You, have no, no, no. You, uh, you, you, you got cargo and you got low packs. So there's 22 tons total of cargo and you can expect that and you've already got it reserved as well as the low packs. You'll need to leave uh, within like a day. So, you know, you're, you're going to have to do your business here today and then leave by tomorrow in order to gain the benefit of that. Or I'll re if you stay longer, I'll just re-roll it. And, hey, I don't know. Let's right. see. Uh, okay, so anyways. Uh... <laughs> So, uh, you come down to breakfast, you encounter um, Lamar here, um, and uh, some entertainers come over from the, uh, the tables, and they, uh, um, you know, they're, uh, I don't know, dressed fancy, if you will, I, I kind of like cheap, uh, like Vegas fancy, though, and... Uh, these are people that dance and sing and uh, run tables and entertain guests and everything. And they, they, they're they like, welcome to the Lucky Stars Travelers. And by the way, why, how are you all dressed? Probably not in my back suit for the first time in a long time. <laughs> Whipping out the good old leisure suit. Somebody, but oh, it was the other crew. No, it was the guy in the first crew that got the leisure suit. He spent like five five thousand five hundred credits on it, or something like that. But I'm guessing everybody else is. What do you guys wear? Just like a like a shirt and pants. You're not gonna wear your. Uh... I mean, I'm wearing my three quarter length, you know, jacket with uh, which is cloth armor. Uh, you know. <laughs> You're gonna uh... wear Kevlar around. <laughs> Well, it, it's that's from what I understood. I think from the description and the thing, anyway. But anyway, I don't. I don't want to get into a whole. But yeah, I mean, I, I. This is kind of the thing I'm asking: Is it do you present yourselves as like, hey, we got knives under this coat and we're wearing Kevlar, or you're like, no, I'm wearing a polo shirt. Oh, my cutlass is out. I mean, it's not oh. out, but it's it's on my belt for sure, and and my pistol. There's no doubt about that. Okay, so one if of the. For, uh, oh, go ahead. I, I just want to say, Marcello, Marcello's not wearing his cutlass. Uh, this is downtime for him, so 
He's got a uh, a denim trucker jacket on. Nice. Uh, he's got a uh, big pull on his uh, his leather belt, and uh, he's got a uh, uh, what do you call it? A bandana tied around his neck. So, ready for the town. Nice. Awesome. Um. Yeah. Space Americana. All right. So. Mm-hmm. Um, Anyways, one of the men, uh, they see at least Bellamy then with his jacket, obviously has a freaking sword. Now, that's not out of place. There are plenty of spacers walking around here. But they see you and they're like, oh, are you a traveler? Why, you need something done? <laughs> no, not at all, sir. I just wanted to let you know about our, uh, our, uh, our special offer today. If you're a if you're a traveler, we have a discount at the uh, at the medium stakes table. Oh yeah, what's the discount? Uh, the buy-in for any travelers are four hundred credits. Hmm. Won't find Thanks. anything better on the strip. Yeah. <laughs> what if well. buy-in for the high stakes games? Ooh, ten percent. High stakes roller, four thousand credits. Tire thousand credits off. Did uh, did any other travelers take you up on your offer? Oh yeah. In fact, I don't know. We might run out soon. I would I would take one of these these uh, vouchers if I were you. Expert salesman here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what does Lothak think? Has she gotten in on any of the uh, gambling that's happened since she's joined our crew? Is she like itching to get in on that? I don't think it was part of her culture, uh, but like, she just has a wide-eyed feel f- to all of this. You know, this is she's learning to be a traveler. I have to imagine dogs are terrible with probabilities. <laughs> <laughs> you can literally read her face; like, <laughs> you can tell if she's lying. <laughs> That's I would definitely love to play against Lothak. So, Cabinet, with your permission. <laughs> Lothak, you don't need my permission. You know? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously spending my own money, but like you said, yeah. sometimes that's money's going to end up going down toward, towards your mortgage payments. <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, the ship will take any. Any donations? Yeah, some. Uh, you know, uh, you, this man. He's very attractive. There's a couple of very attractive women, uh, and they're they're all like, you know, treating you like your VIPs. You know, and like, uh, and they slip you cards, like you know, just for you. You know, if you want, you can get this ten percent off to buy in, either uh, medium or high stakes here at the tables. You just let us know. We'll keep uh, we'll keep the chair open for you, and they leave you. Are any of you itching? Any of you itching to play play cards? Gamble? Oh, I I challenge you. In fact, Marcello, you me the medium stakes table. You all should be you all should be playing the house, not each other. Um, yeah. So once again, there are three games that are predominant here. Uh, there is um, all three dice games. You can imagine their cards, though. Uh, there's, um, and I apologize. It's 50 credits is like a, a medium buy-in, and then 500 credits is uh, high stakes. I think actually, so you can get that for forty and four like credits. It. Yeah, uh, hand of fate. Um, I roll a secret d12, and then uh, essentially you um, you'll well, I'll roll one d12 out in the open, and then from that you can call, raise, or fold, like uh, to add, um, and then I'll keep adding community dice too. Uh, and then whoever gets the highest without going over wins. All of these are pretty similar to Blackjack. Jip uh, uh, is a 2d6 to get a 7 or 12. And you add a d6 on every raise. 
Um, and then there's a dice blackjack, which is um, I'll I'll roll two d10, and you add a d10 on a, a draw. Every time the bet goes up, 21 wins or the highest. Greater than 21 or lowest, you lose. I'll buy in medium stakes. Does everybody in, uh, want to uh, went in on on this game? Like, is it going to be the same table? You all, you all want to just come in on the same table? Just all bet together? Yeah, why not? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm drawn, yeah. drawn towards Hand of Fate. I want to see the D12 in action. <laughs> it's rare. It's exotic. You don't see that out in the out in the void. <laughs> all right. So there's there's kind of two. I I'm may down. be misunderstanding this, so I, I, I apologize. But I'm going to have a secret D12. Never want to hear D12. the dealer say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the dealer's uh, the dealer is this uh, seemingly shy man, and he's like, "Oh, I'm kind of new to this. I, I don't know. We'll see how it goes." So. <laughs> <laughs> I was way too much confidence in us, and it will be our downfall. <laughs> now, as soon as you buy in, so is it going to be medium? Everybody's going to do forty credits. Forty credits. Uh, I'll yeah, do, I'll do in forty. I'll do the uh, higher one if if that doesn't change anything. Uh, it'll be a different table, but let's do it. Let's put you over. Does anybody else want high stakes? I'll go to the higher table too. Okay. Do you want? You yeah. Guys... Yeah, me too. I'm not okay. gonna. I'm not okay, in front well, of the it. kids' I, table. I... Is that one? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So oh, we got. Golly, if you're gonna put it that way. I better go over there too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> table. I mean, you know. He's All stunned. Your pressure. <laughs> Chapman's <laughs> just sitting by himself now. Everybody's like, actually, no, we'll just Lamar's, go back. Lamar's at the medium table, too, unless he's not there yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing against Lamar and Lothak. I gotta, I gotta school these kids. <laughs> nice. Um, need to get a notepad to take notes. Whoa. Um, Shaky cam. Right. It's 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 Special cinema ver cinema verite. <laughs> that's yeah, that's what we have here. <laughs> so let's start with the uh the moderate stakes table. Uh so I think I, I could be I, I'm just trying to read what I wrote from before, but I believe I have a secret D twelve and then you have a community D twelve. And you're trying to get close to the uh, the number, but you add the community D12 to whatever you draw, so, and then you can call, raise, or fold. That's I I think that's how it goes. So I'm gonna roll a secret D12, and I'm gonna add. There are five other people at this table. Okay, so here it goes. Fascinating. Fascinating. I may have no idea. I might be doing this wrong, but here it goes. Here's a community D12. Um, house folds. Everybody gets their money. And you get the house's money. Great. That was easy. Awesome. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and, and he says he's so he's so me mild. He's like, Oh, I'm just I'm just kind of new to this game. I I, I don't know. I, I just all right. So who's right. at the moderate stakes table? Uh, Lamar and Lothak. Chapman. And Lothak, yeah. Got Lamar. It. I'm going to take a quick bio break while y'all are at the low stakes. All right, Chapman and Lothak. Okay. Mo mo modest stakes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, a four? Okay. And then that I rolled as a community one. So you, you're starting at a four. So everybody would roll a D12 to get what you think is the secret die on another D12. So it can't be higher than a 12, right? So it's got to be a pretty low number. Um, and, and so it should go pretty fast. You should either call it, fold, or raise. And Lothak oh. is going to call where she's going to call where she's at. She's got it. So she we thinks, roll she thinks she is. We add it to the communal one that you just did, the four. Yeah, and it's whoever gets the closest. I think I said did highest. I I'm going to say closest. So we should go ahead and roll then, right? Yes, you should roll a d12. All right. 
I will stay where I'm at. I total eight. Okay, so you're calling it as well. I'm gonna yeah. fold. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I don't play. I'm sorry. I don't play a lot of card games. If you fold, you lose your money. You lose your money. But if you call it and you stay, then you stay in, and it keeps going. So you go on to the next round. So you could lose more money. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's you know until everybody is either uh, called or folded, and then you have to do the reveal typically. Okay, so um, everybody at the table folds, except for uh, Lothak, who stays, and three others. Um, and then, uh, let's see, and then Community D12s adjust the bets from the pool. So you guys are going to bet, bet again, is that right? You're going to keep going? We add it to what our result was before. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. So okay. And and I'll just keep that. And that that community die was at four. Okay. At this mm. point, Lothak will fold. I think I have to fold. Second person will fold. Oh wow. Okay. All right. Is anybody still in? No. No? no. Uh, the the, the mild-mannered guy, he looks at it, he's like, oh, I guess I'm lucky. Great. <laughs> Thanks. <all> the, <laughs> gathers up all the money. <laughs> Can we try it again? That was a lot of fun. <laughs> You can cheat, by the way. There's rules for cheating if you want to try to do that. <laughs> There's rules for cheating? That yeah. seems like an oxymoron. <laughs> I know, right? Nice. It's, mm. Let me know if you want to cheat. I'm not going to look it up unless we do that. Yeah, you guys want to try it again? I think, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to leave just because I'm up 40, so I'm going to leave while I'm ahead. I won 40, so. All right. What would you say, Marcello? Mm. Smart man. Okay. All right, and then what? Everybody else just lost. Uh, uh, some people lost what? Uh, forty, and then forty is eighty, I think. Right? Did you yeah. stayed. Yeah. All right. So yeah, the uh, the house wins. So let's let's shift over to the moderate stakes table, and uh, you guys are doing. You mean the high stakes? Or sorry, like high blackjack, stakes. Blackjack, yeah. I think. Blackjack. Okay, this one's much easier. This one, this one's much easier to comprehend and, and way less. Like a, it looks to me like this, the previous game is real fast. Like you're gonna get there real fast, but this one's like blackjack. Okay, so um, house two D ten, add D ten on a draw. So yeah, all it is in this case is you're trying to get to twenty one, and you roll two D ten, and you do a D ten on every every time you draw a card. Do we each roll our own 2d10 for our hand? Yep. Uh, okay. And, and I trust you all. You can roll it in private if you prefer. Oh. It's like we're roll, you know, playing blackjack. When do we... Um... This is for uh, 400 credits. I thought it was 4,000. I thought yeah. the other one was 400. No, I... I, I, I corrected myself. Yeah, I corrected myself. Oh, Okay. So this is 400. You want to bet 4,000, Captain? <laughs> no, not, not, no, I, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, okay. The house stays. I am going to roll one more. I'm going to draw one. All right, let me look at, the, at everybody else and see what we have. There are three other people playing at the table. Um... I'm sorry, the house is going to roll again, but I'll get to that in a second. So, I'm sorry, so we roll once 2d10, and then do we keep rolling? 
if we want to, or how does that work? So we'll 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 stop there, right? And then like you know we'll announce whether or not because we should be bluffing, right? So we'll stop there, and then I'll tell you each person if they're gonna uh, fold, if they're gonna uh, what do you what do you say uh, draw. stay draw, or if they're gonna just stay or hold them or whatever they you say. So. Uh, but let me finish. I have one more. Sorry. Let me look at what the other person has. Three, eight. Oh. Let me re-roll that. I just said it out loud like a dum-dum. Okay. All right. Here we go. So, the first person. Draw. Draw. Stay. Draw. All right. What do you all think? I already drew one, and I'm I'm still deciding. Okay, whether draw. draw. Okay, what about Bellamy? Uh, I will draw. So it's it's a D10 when you draw. Yep. All right, and then uh, books. Um. Yeah, I'll I'll draw as well. Draw. Okay. Cool. Cool. Cello draws too. You don't have to do it in the open, but it's up to you. Whatever. You want to do. I I didn't know how to do it privately. You do a self roll. It's one of these. Got it. Rolls. Okay. Come on. Well, anyways, I'm, I'm going to keep the rolls that I've made so far, if that's okay. Wait, if we get 21, is that over or is that good? <laughs> His books ask that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I I've never played this any before. Is this good? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, the house looks at you and they're like, and everybody else looks at you. It's good. Yeah. Did, did anybody else get a 21? Not yet. Hold on. Okay. Do I get to draw again? Yeah, yeah. You can You can see if you can Yeah, get a 21 as well, certainly. Okay. Um, now, I'm just curious. How does, does my gambling skill have any effect on this roll? Yeah, okay. All right. Let's look at it. I'm, I'm, I'm curious myself. Uh, I know that you can cheat, uh, and there's like a whole bunch of different things you can do with gambling. Uh, so it says this. It says that you can... Um, basically, it offers you a game which is just roll 2d6 to hit a target number, and it gives you a bonus to that. Now, it says games may be crooked. You throw a 10 plus to be honest. What's your gambling level? Just, just a 1. All right. So I'll make you a deal and say that so it says gambling three or better usually detects crooked games so you can't detect unless you're gambling three but if you want to be crooked you can roll uh 10 plus but if you had two i would lower that that's that's my thought and then um and it says gambling four which we're not you know um lower expertise level okay yeah so basically you can attempt to cheat and just get a 21 and not tell us to be clear don't tell us if you're cheating i don't even want to know that's fun but you know if you roll a 2d6 and get a 10 and you try to cheat but if you try to cheat and roll a 2d6 and fail yeah you gotta let me know okay um so i don't is there a house dealer here mm -hmm. and other players yeah and I, I don't understand. So if you don't make 21, but you still beat the house, do you still, do you win anything or, or how does that work? Yeah. I mean, if you beat the house, then you win. Okay. Yeah. I'll stay then. Um, but, but if you, but I think, uh, I think winner takes all is what I was going to do. Oh, okay. So, well, I'll stay anyway, cause it's what nice I would do. Simple. Okay. So, all right. Any 21s? You got a 21? Sure. All right. <laughs> yes. I love I do. it. All right. So you can split it evenly. Let me see what we got here. We got... Um, so these are, by the way, this is 500 credits. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why not? 2,000 nice. credits. Plus, uh, you've got, let's see, one other person with 400 credits. So 2,400 divided by two, each of you gets 1,200 credits. And uh, Bellamy, you're down 400 credits. Yep. Nice. Now, this all takes place, by the way, I forgot, I, I forgot to mention this. They bring out drinks, and they expect you to eat and drink, and it's free. So, um... I've never really gambled. What do you eat at the card table? <laughs> 
They'll bring you whatever you want. They'll comp you all night long. You have cards they more, like, more want to get you soft than, than feed sure. you, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Four person all over here. As soon as you lose 500, they'll give you a coupon for the noodle bar. <laughs> in order to accomplish things, um, essentially you're you're limited on your number of rounds uh, by how much you can drink, and the amount you can drink is your endurance, if I recall correctly. I think that's what I said <laughs> last time. So, if you have ten endurance, you now temporarily have nine endurance as you as time passes. Let me uh, let me roll to see if anything else is going on. So it's essentially, does it, you essentially lose three per per gambling round? Is that how you're doing it, or just like one per hour, and you do a thing every hour, like an oh, hour okay. is is a is a turn. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Um. So did 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 I uh, did Marcello also lose five hundred, or was that just Bellamy? I'm sorry. Uh, Yes. We lose you, 400. Yeah, did you get did you get 21? No, I got ah, 17. Very well, yes, you lost 400. Let me add, uh, let's see. So that would actually make it 1,300 for the winners. Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, wait, 1,400. 1,400 for the winners. The house is comping 100 on our bets because we're travelers, right? So these are actually 500... 500 credit bets. That's true too. Discount. That's true. That's 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 true too. Let's see. So that makes it 1600. <laughs> Could make the math just a little bit easier too. Nice. Maybe 1600. Okay. So let's see here. I I gotta look and see what what's going We're on. We're letting it ride, baby. <laughs> We're letting it ride all night long. That's a, <laughs> I got endurance nine. I have twelve, so I can go along. Oh, no. <laughs> but the funny of thing is, you if you get in a if you get in a fight, that r reduces the number of I times know. you can survive. That makes a fight. it more fun. That makes it more fun. <laughs> but if we also if we get into a fight, we have to remember it's going to cut into our gambling time, <laughs> unless we win the fight quickly. Because each swing is one point of endurance, I think. Uh, do they allow spectators at the blackjack table? Or like, is there like a second, like a line for people standing behind all of the players? I think a lot of casinos do. I'm not sure. I'd be surprised if Star Town Liberty didn't. I don't see this as like a super high Jammies class. Come over like with a beer and pretzel. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bellamy's settling in I'm not sweating yet boy the Ross is taking a long time over sorry there. yeah no I'll, and I mentioned this a while back but I'll have to do that because there's just so many tables which is fun yes no it's good it's, good. It's, it's fun but then I have to you know figure it out here so The traveler maxim there's a table for it <laughs> yep uh let's see here and in fact something interesting's happened but i'm like making a bunch of rolls so let me see is that t5 or the original <laughs> that's t5 Oh, I thought you were picking on me. Yeah, I think it's a place me rules. I'm determining the genetic structure of your encounter. Oh, uh, yes. I'm seeing yes. if they can be cloned or not. <laughs> Do they have the genetic integrity to be cloned? <laughs> Did you determine the genetics of their parentage to see how, how much of their strength was inherited and how much, <laughs> how much was due to their upbringing? <laughs> All right, so this is what happens. Um, you all are gambling. You've split up into two different tables. Uh, Coleman, you you are like sure. I got a I got a twenty one. You pull, you know, sixteen hundred credits uh, worth of chips off the table to cash in. 
and you see out of the corner of your eye that uh, now here I've explained this before but in some sense in my opinion travelers exist in a small world and what I mean by that is not everybody's a traveler and so like when you're in a subsector you're gonna go to the same starports and you're gonna encounter people and to me that I don't know like you exist within this kind of ecosystem or network and Coleman, out of the corner of your eye, you see somebody you served with and their casino staff. And they look over and they see this army major that used to swindle people pulling in 1,600 credits in from a table. And they're whispering to someone else about you. <laughs> what do you do? Um... I, I'm, I'm, I might cash my chips and call it a night. <laughs> Get out while I'm before I've got a problem. <laughs> uh, um, all right. So do you just like, all right, gentlemen, have fun. And then just like get the chips. No, I mean, just... I, I'll probably go back and just say, eh, that's, you know, I got my fix. And, uh, you know, y'all, y'all, I'm ahead. His endurance up until yeah, a few yeah, seconds. I might just stand with Chapman and, and, and drink a beer and, and have a pretzel. Yeah. <laughs> and just you know kind of i had i had i got my, my my little time of fun and now it's you know waiting on the group till they have theirs okay let me see uh let me do my reaction roll all right that works uh you uh you you know separate out from the table long enough and you cash everything <laughs> in to disappear out of sight and uh, that kind of like slows things down as far as them kind of taking an interest in you. You'll circle back around to the table, but you made your 1,600 credits and you got out, you got out of there. Um, not a huge haul, but maybe you've learned uh, since then to be more discreet. Now, <laughs> no when to walk away. Not so, discreet enough. But <laughs> <laughs> that was one hour, okay? So uh, back to the table as a whole. Uh, you guys want to keep gambling and uh, drinking, seeing what happens in the casino and trying to make money? You want to do one more round? I'm out. You cash out, right. Okay. I cash out. Uh, good luck, Captain. I'm going to go get some uh, uh, chicken wings and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it's like some bourbon. Okay? Out. <laughs> All right. Wish me luck. Oh, you did. Thanks. <laughs> so everybody can reduce their endurance by one as well and then um all right so back to the uh the moderate stakes table um this one is so much more complicated let me get my d12 <laughs> no 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 I'm, I'm i'm switching to a different game oh okay you guys want to do a different game you want to do jip or blackjack um oh what does Lamar think? Lamar's out. He folded. He won a hand. He's he's good with that. All right, fine. I'm going to try Jip just to see what it's like. Well, what do you think, Books? Um, well, I'm I'm still going to gamble the, the same game I was playing. Okay, so you're staying in. Yeah, yeah. I definitely want to stay you're in good. for another hand. You were a blackjack at the high school. Table, sure. Though. Okay, so we got three in. All right. So okay. So um, and and also Lothak. Okay. So. Um, well, we're playing different games, though. I thought. No, no, I know. I'm just saying that. So there's there's four. There's there's um, uh, there's uh, Chapman and Lothak, and then there's uh, Books and Bellamy. Okay. So here we go, Chapman, uh, and you're gonna head to a jip table. And. Um, this person is cocksure, and they're just like, it's this woman. She's like, ah, uh, traveler. Okay, well, come on and give it a try. Uh, remind me how Jeff works. So, um, and, and she says this really condescendingly, like baby talk, like Barney style. She goes, she says that, it, all right, 2d6, uh, and you want to get a 7 or a 12. Uh, and you can add a d6 per turn, and a 7 or 12 wins. And uh, the house will just play against you, winner takes all. 
and so I phrase it as I know how the game works, but my friend here doesn't. Can you explain it for her? <laughs> her ears go back, you know, like nervous when you say that. But um, she she smiles and gives her the same treatment. And here we go. Dang. There's no penalty for, I mean, busting if you go over 12 would be the same as folding, right? Yeah, you would just lose. lose. Yeah, lose. <laughs> and I have no reason not to fold if I'm already over 7. Okay. Um, yeah, I got me on my first draw, so I'm going to hit again to see if I can get to 12. And I do! Back. Oh my gosh! Lothak, uh, you look at Lothak and her proprioceptors are like like this and she's got like a smile on the corner of her mouth and she's like and she just looks at you like you know it's <laughs> obvious that she's got something good she can't hide it uh, myself as well i will return with this equal subtlety <laughs> i'm just as excited to win the the house looks at lothak and she and the house is like fold <laughs> Poor Loth, poor Varger, trying to gamble. Can you imagine like crews of Varger coming in here? They probably hate humans so bad. Tails wagging. Yeah, her tails wagging. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you're gonna keep going. Yeah. Okay, so this raises it, and we're at 50 now. So it raises it to another 50, and uh, Lothak stays. I'm gonna stay. All right. Um, she, uh, at this point, I'm, I'm guessing you have a 12 or something, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I, and let's let's say that that happens. So you, you reveal your cards, you got a 12. And Lothak is so disappointed because she got a 7. But I, I'm going to say a 12 beats that because that makes sense to me. Like, cause, you know, you've got those two. Uh, and and she's, right. yeah, she's devastated and she looks so sad. But you take all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so what is that that's uh let's see 50 that's 150 uh, plus another uh, 200 right so yeah because you went two rounds that including the, the the house's inducement uh i i i just i i take that as being like a one-time thing like you get like oh, a okay. voucher for that yeah so okay. i think you i think you won 200 there but, all right so let's switch back over to the other table and um, books and Bellamy and are you guys still going to play blackjack? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm okay with that. Yeah. All right. This is a 500 yeah. credit buy-in. Let's so do it. Three. Let me do the house. Just winner take all. Okay. Um, everybody is going to draw. I'm going to stay. Ooh. When it gets around um, to you, and oh, qu go ahead. Qu question, actually. Can you split? <laughs> split? Yeah, like you get doubles. Can I split it into two hands? I don't know. I mean, I I don't I don't need to take it too detailed if you don't want to get into like blackjack, blackjack stuff. Space that's, blackjack, thank you. That's yeah, fine. Sorry. We can just we can keep it at space blackjack. In yeah, that case, that's I'm a, a, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> in that case, I'm just gonna stand. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't actually know that much about like card games, but if you roll double, I mean, if you get doubles, you're. You can split your hand and then work on two hands cool. at the same time. This makes me want to play card games, too. This is neat. Uh, I haven't done it in years. Okay. So, okay. So, everybody uh, drew. Bellamy is, is staying. Uh, what about books? Um, I draw. I'm going to draw as well. Draw. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, 
Hearing that uh, Bellamy is going to stay, the last person folds on the second one. And then it goes um, draw, draw, draw. All right, what about books? I'm going to stay. Stay, all right. Whoa, okay. What about Bellamy? I've already stayed. I'm sorry, the second, second round, right? I mean, in, in a blackjack from... I yeah, thought yeah. I'm sorry, that's much. fine. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Okay. Yeah, seriously, I don't know anything about card games. My bad. I have just this much note. I have, like, three lines. I just have, like, uh, 2d10, add a d10, and on a, you know, uh, bet goes up, 21 wins. So I don't, I don't have that much depth to space blackjack, space 21, whatever it is. All right, here we go. So when, but when they hear that... Um, two of them fold, but one of them one of them draws. And they draw again. And then they stay. All right, Bellamy, what did you get? 18. 18? Books? I also got 18. This patron got 20. All right, so, uh, oof. yeah, you guys lose, uh, let's see, how many rounds was that? Three, four? Is it, is it 500 every round? Yeah, because you, if you stay in versus folding. So, whatever that was, 15. I think it was three. Yeah, 1,500 credits. All right, so, meanwhile, let's hand the camera over to everybody else now that you've uh you know uh seen that everybody's kind of mostly dispersed what do you do uh coleman do you what do you return to one of the two tables do you like oh, I, go around the I, I pretty much went back i i mean like i kind of was meandering back to the high stakes table <laughs> just to watch okay kind of lick your lips a little bit like i'll just well, watch i'll just I, watch <laughs> Basically, like, He's try to see how I got busted. <laughs> Who caught me? <laughs> uh, you can make, like, an intelligence check. See if, uh, okay. see if you can figure that out. Right. And you can add your... Um, you, can, you can pass on a... What's your intelligence? Eight. 2d6 to roll under intelligence, uh, but we'll make it a nine. Because you got gambling one. No, no. Uh oh, yeah, no, you can't tell. I mean, you know, like you could assume that it's because that person saw you, and that might have been yeah. enough. Yeah. But yeah, you're not sure. Is it possible that that weedy little guy there, who is so soft-spoken, actually had some kind of scheme going on? Uh, wait, no, wait. You were at the high stakes table, right? Yeah, I was at the high stakes. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows what's going on? But um, okay. all right. So you did that. Meanwhile, Marcello, what are you doing? Uh, Marcello went over and got some seconds on the uh, chicken wings, and uh, he's walking back uh, with them now. And uh, he's just been watching his crewmates uh, make bank. But, you know, he doesn't have the stomach for uh, for losing money. you got to try the pig beetle ribs. Yeah, do you want to know what weird uh, food is in here? This space. I can give you a weird food uh, that you're eating here if you want. Thought it was chickens and I mean, had no idea. I like the chicken wings. It could just be chicken wings. I mean, it's not chicken, but you can call it chicken wings. You can call it. <laughs> okay. It's whatever space chicken is on your planet, but you know, it's some sort of bird, maybe. It tastes like chicken. Maybe. Right. Well, That's anyways. what it says on the menu. Some kind of bird wings. <laughs> chicken. And then chickens misspelled. But 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 locally, whatever your chicken is, you know, in space, I don't know what they have out there yeah. three thousand years from now. Uh, well, anyways, um, yeah, Marcello's a ectomorph man. He's just like pit, chowing down on them chicken wings, uh, still going. But he's a skinny guy, skinny guy. So, all right, time Very passes. So. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lamar, what are you doing? I can't read my writing. 
Lamar has a mineral water and is watching the high stakes table. Ooh, fancy for a traveler. Mineral water. <laughs> okay. You're watching it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I guess if you're not, you know, if you're not actively searching for people talking, gambling, uh, or traveling, I'll say, yeah, you, you don't have to drink. So you don't have to, you don't have to reduce your endurance. Uh, and same goes for can my I, uh, Go ahead. Can I, can I wander around the uh, gambling casino area and see if I pick up any rumors? Yeah, absolutely. Now now we're talking about drinking. Yeah, you can see if you can pick up rumors. Um, what I'll do is actually roll your own encounter check ahead of time. Let me see. Uh, now, you, you may not find one. To be clear, this is something that's kind of been dizzying to some people. As the is, is it, it's you may not find what you're looking for, but um, let's see here five. Okay. How much money have you made so far? Um, let's see, negative nineteen hundred. <laughs> well, that that's that's not good. <laughs> no, it's not. Well, surely if you just keep just... playing, you can you can fix that up. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, excellent news. Um, so. Lamar, you uh, you go around the casino. Who, what kind of person are you looking for? Are you looking for like people that might have money that could offer a job? Are you looking for other travelers? Are you trying to help out with the speculative speculative trade and find a potential deal to move cargo? Uh, are you trying to what what kind of thing are you looking for? I'd say I'm looking for patron people that are rolling in high money that are looking for travelers to do work. All right. Um, you see a group of Varger. Um, now, the rest of you, you know, you've had your interactions with Varger, but Lamar hasn't. He served with them uh, at the Battle of Rylanor. They seem to do well, you know. I think so. One of them died under your command, you know, so probably, I don't know how you feel about Varger, but you see a group of, they're, they're the dog people. And you see uh, some Varger hanging out by themselves. And it's clear that these are some kind of traveler. You know, th these are spacefaring Varger. And they, uh, uh, Lamar, they, um, they can tell that you're a traveler, and they invite you to drink with them. I accept. All right. Uh, at this point, a round has passed. I, I got to remember to do the counter. Let me make a note for everybody else. So everybody can reduce their endurance by one, except for uh, Coleman and Marcello. Um, all right. Okay, so you sit down with these Varger, and uh, they say, Are you a free trader? Do you have a ship? I am currently employed with somebody who has a ship, yes. Who do you work for? I work for Captain Klaus Bellamy. No, no. Not just your captain. 
Who's your captain work for? Are you Imperial? Uh, do I know? I don't think I know, do I? Yeah, like, I mean, you know, do you work for, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, well, you would know enough to know the answer is no one but ourselves. Okay, we work for ourselves. They look at each other for a moment. We're looking for people that can help move goods into some of the nearby planets. In particular, we're looking for a ship that can move some stuff to Walston. What's the cargo? Nothing that you need to know. But... Well, for discretion comes a higher pay. Ah. Nice. Now we're going to use the speculative trade minigame. Uh, and you may not want to take this this cargo, but it's up to you all. Uh, but... Um, they will basically offer this... You know, they need it moved. So uh, you will just get paid. You don't have to actually pay for it. That's the big boon. That's the boon here. Uh, they have... Uh, so, let's see. Um, you would roll... Um, 2d6. And I because I want this to be player-facing... Um, I'm going to just reverse it, and this will determine the, the percentage, like, as far as what it's worth. So you'll, you'll know. So that's a pretty huge boon. And then, and then on top of that, you have um, admin, right? Do you have admin one? Yeah, I do. Okay. You can add one to the result of your roll. So 2d6 plus one? Yes. All right, you got an eight, and that's a nine. Okay, so let's see. Um, they're probably just going to give you the profit. I'm going to be honest with you, but it's quite a bit. I mean, well, I got to do math. <laughs> oh no. Um, they uh, they suggest that this is if you can get this to an off-site location, that you could make a six hundred thousand credit profit off of it. Six thousand. Six hundred thousand. Six hundred thousand. Oh, whoa. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever is in this. Whatever is in this cargo, is worth a lot of money. But I they have strong uh, it, about what this is. One, one of the Varger, <laughs> one of the Varger says, "But we'll also need one of our security details to go along for the job." You understand? Of course. Let me relay this to my boss and see what he has to say about it. I relay everything to uh, Bellamy. Hey, so I just heard about this job, Bellamy. We could potentially earn 600,000 credits just to move some cargo out to Walston. I, I, I immediately jump up in excitement, com in a combination of excitement and disgust. Uh, disgust at the, my, at, the, at the table that I'm leaving behind me, like dust in the, in the road, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and excitement at, uh, who's the client? These Varger that I've been talking to. Let me introduce you. And I introduce Bellamy right. to the Varger that I've been talking to. All right. I'm going to call everybody over. Well, that's, I was going to say, I, I was seeing you jump up from the table and hearing if, if I can overhear. Yeah, I was going to follow regardless. So. Now we have some real gambling to do. Okay. So I just want to, I'm going to cover some information that we certainly would have talked about on the ship amongst ourselves. Um, but you guys had a different experience, Books and Chapman, 
than our group on Walston. Um, and in one particular case, we foiled a terrorist attack uh, and saved the dictator's life and like became heroes of the of the planet now the dictator took the majority of the credit but everybody that knows anything on walston is going to remember our crew fondly and although we were under a different ship name at the time but nonetheless um one thing we also discovered while we were there is there's a varger group in particular that we kind of suspect might have been behind this terrorist attack and they wanted us to on the day of the attack we were supposed to do a job for that group um or at least we had been offered one and uh it was to deliver some high value cargo somewhere off site <laughs> And, uh, and, uh, and instead we reported the whole thing to the planetary authorities and, uh, and, you know, I don't know if that had any direct relation to the spark street battle that got sparked in that same day and the assassination attempt and all this other stuff. The point is we could be stumbling into a serious hornet's nest by getting involved in this. And I just wanted to say that that would be behind the look that I now give <laughs> <laughs> to, that Bellamy now gives. Um, I was worried. Um, so Books and I experienced, I think, pretty much the exact same thing. A few details changed. Uh, yeah. We asked them their motivations. They explained, like, they're accelerationists. They are Varger supremacists who wanted to overthrow Imperium presence and everything. And um, uh, Books, do, did we end up, like lying and agreeing to the job but then not actually doing it does that sound right that does sound right i think yeah i think we kind of blew them off a little bit <laughs> yeah and then foiled terrorist plot um, yes you know, i so... was worried you guys did not have that experience and that you were going to be eager to take up this job and i would be you know fighting an uphill battle trying to talk you out of it because uh, of that number <laughs> I, I am eager because the number is ridiculous <laughs> but um, yeah, so, okay, so we will have, we will all then be aware of the same information, generally, that, 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 now, I want, that, all that being said, I remember that Varger clan that we were talking to, they had, like, a different look than the Varger that were on Walston. Mm -hmm. Do these have the same look? Yeah, I would be curious to know what breed exactly. this Varger is we're talking to. Is it a, is it a, a golden retriever? We decided that the people on Walston were either pugs or chihuahuas or some sort of some, well, some I mean, you know, uh, lore wise, there were all wolves when they were uplifted by the ancients. But but yes, I'm sure as just like humans over time, they have developed their various traits and stuff. I am the chihuahua of humanity. <laughs> I feel that in my bones. It's it's true. Yes. Um, well, so yeah. Do these guys resemble those same other guys? Do... Yeah, yeah. So here's the thing. So Lamar, you come back to everybody, right? And uh, you give this information, right? Yeah. Okay. Everybody, you will have had to have talked about this to act on it. So you all chat real quick, and then you do the thing. You and Lothak, because there's no way Lothak's going to hide it, you look at them. So you all turn and you look at them, and they turn and they look back at you. And you see them talk really fast, and you think you, you see the words in Anglic, Walston Rangers, and, uh, and you see blasters being pulled out and a, uh -oh. a table getting flipped over. Oh! Whoa! What? What the heck? Yeah, these. That's these, like what our reputation gets us. Yeah. Yeah, these are like the greatest enemies of those. Uh, you, you are like enemy number one to these people. So, uh, as soon as they see uh, that this is the great, you know, indomitable crew of the Lady of Mercia that uh, you know nearly just slain their their great leader and everything else, and foiled their their plans. 
they they knock a table over and uh, blasters come out and they start shooting. And everybody Excellent starts mom. screaming. Told you all to wear your cloth. Told you all to wear your cloth. Okay. So, um, what's the what do you all do? Lamar flips the table yeah, over Lamar. opposite them, the table that we're at. He flips it over and rolls it in front of us. All right, I'm gonna put everybody here on this uh, this tabletop. Marcello's just overeating chicken wings. Has a chicken wing up his <laughs> mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> greasy fingers and everything. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, what are they armed with, these guys? Armed and armored? Um, good question. Let me take a quick look here. I found my... Uh, primarily pistols. And, cloth uh, armor, back suits? Uh, cloth armor. Cloth armor and pistols and shotguns. Lamar's in his back suit, by the way. Uh, they, you can tell that the the table they flip so, flip over give half of them the benefits of like partial cover, so they get a minus four just for that, and then you also have uh, cloth armor. And then you said that. Um, uh, Lamar, you kick a table over as well, right? I know it's hard to see because it's white on white, but let's see. Looking for a Lamar. I think you're right there. So you got a table as well. All right. So you kick a table over. Um, and I don't know. What's what's everybody else doing? Tell me uh, what, what, what's Books doing? Um, so Books is going to um, try to find a way to... Uh, maximize his cover so no problem yeah yeah, yeah. You, uh, you there's a little one of those crappy fake fountain things nearby those are turning out to be weirdly important to this game <laughs> um, and so you find one of those and it gives you full cover if you're prone but you're not able to see or fire and it gives you a minus four or, or you know the benefits of cover if you are firing or if you're looking over it uh, all right. Meanwhile, uh, Coleman, the army guy, like, tactics. Yeah, that's exactly. I'd like to kind of like, as, you know, do a, like a situational awareness to kind of see like, you know, one, to identify places where we could get cover. And then two, are there casino security that are going to become involved in this firefight? So we need to stay clear of their line of fire. And um, yeah, so I'm, I, I think I'm going to try and take a position, not prone, but you know, crouched behind this, um, and like I said, try to make an assessment. Sure. You don't have to roll for that. You have tactics one. I'll tell you some things that you can see. Number one, there's ample cover where you all are. You can use the tables. Uh, there's sturdy, uh, like crappy furniture. Uh, there's uh, it's terraced. Yeah, like so, there's different levels where people are gambling at. So you can get behind things and you can reliably take cover. Number two. Uh, this place has crappy security and they're slow to respond and there's not many of them and they're not nearly as trained as well as you are. Number three, uh, these people seem like they're in a good position because they have a, a large group of them under solid cover and they, you know, are starting to fire at you. However, you can quickly assess on the end of the casino that they're at that they have a weak position of fire superiority and if you were to maneuver against them in any way that you would quickly find them not under cover at all. Okay. And, and it's, you know, presumably, I mean, you're, you're talking about, you know, kind of like, you know, kind of making like a flanking maneuver either here or here. Is that what you're... If you did that, they wouldn't have cover and there's nothing anybody could do about it or n nothing they could do about it. Okay. And now, is, you know, is there anything that would, you know, on either of these flanks that would give us cover while depriving them of theirs is less so you would need to strike and kill them presumably you know okay 
Okay. Um, and, uh, okay. So and you, I'm kind you of do all out, that. You know, we, all right. Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm the, kind of bark out just the general, you know, hey, you know, we're going to need to, you know, put down some, some kind of cover fire and then, you know, flank their position on either side. All right. Marcello, all what are you doing? Uh, Marcello is hitting uh, <clears throat> the buttons on his uh, denim uh, upper jacket. <laughs> uh, he has no armor on. And in fact, he is completely unarmed except for his dagger. So uh, he's getting behind, uh, getting behind cover. And uh, a, he's looking around for bottles of whiskey and gin that he can use as weapons. And he's kind of like trying to catch the eye of uh, his uh, his compatriots to see if any of them has an extra pistol he can toss them. Does anybody have an extra pistol? Not an extra one. Lothak shakily gives you her pistol. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lovac. Appreciate it. Good, good girl. Any time. Good girl. Um, yeah, all I right. wore my cloth armor, but did not take my rifle. I just carried my dagger into the casino. Ooh. All right. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, uh, back to Chapman. What's Chapman doing? All right. Uh, I'm not wearing my vac suit, but separately, I have cloth armor, which I assume is what I was wearing. Um, I probably did not bring my auto rifle, but I do bring my uh, pistol. Uh, if I'm being realistic, because I thought I was this is going to be downtime, I probably don't have my trusty net on me, much as I would like to use <laughs> it right now. Um, can you show me a distance away that I would qualify as short range rather than medium or long? Um, I would say as soon as you move, you'll be within short range. So just as an example, if you went here, bam, you'd be short range. But from where you are, you're medium range. Uh, yeah, because my pistol against... You said they're in cloth armor? Yes, they're in cloth armor. I need to be within short range in order to counteract that uh, negative modifier. So if anyone else can provide suppressive fire, I will try to get closer to close the distance with them. Question about these, these tables. It's now important. Um... The tables are light enough to kick over. Are they light enough to drag or push while we remain behind them? Yeah, you could totally do that. <laughs> okay. Are they circular or rectangular? Uh, rectangular. Okay. Well, that makes it slightly less easy, but <laughs> um, uh, then Should then let's like then then let's stuff? let's Rolling those of us and... yeah let the, let's those of us that are behind this table, which is me, Chapman, and and. Uh, uh, Lamar, Lamar, Lamar. My, my apologies. Uh, Marcello when I see that, that my... me, I in my head I refer to it as Lando face. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lando uh, <laughs> let's all work together to quick as quick as we can scoot this sucker over to short range and flank them right now. All right. So, uh, Lamar, are you down with creating a big riot shield and like rushing this riot shield up on them? I want to be covering them with fire as they're moving the, uh, as they're moving the table. Yeah, you could totally do that. Uh, what do you got? You got a pistol? You got a rifle? What do you got? I, I just met them, and I walked into the casino with my rifle on my back, so I have a rifle. All right, you got that lever, cowboy western lever action rifle, and you just like raise up and just start firing, you know, to keep them pinned down. That works, uh, uh, sort of. Uh, and I'll get back to you on that. So, but nonetheless, Bellamy and uh, Chapman, you start pushing this table forward. Um, and let's see. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're gonna fire while they're doing that. So I'm gonna give them a chance to shoot you. That's that's. Do you and you have cloth armor, right? Or a vac I've suit? got my I've got my vac suit on. Okay. Uh, let me move our mobile riot shield here now before let's see you're attacking so it's not their turn yet but i'm going to give them a chance to attack you unless meanwhile you all see that they're making this gambit books what are you doing um so before i was um i was hiding i was right. prone so this is the second round yes Okay, um, I have my shotgun on me. I had it strapped to my back. 
Okay. Um, so I'm going to get out of that prone position um, and still try to see if I can line up a shot from where I am um, but while still being partly covered. Chuck 2d6. Uh, I think you're going to need to get like a 10. Unless you can, unless you have other math that you can add to that. Uh, it's a shotgun. Uh, all right, Marcello. I don't want to expose myself in any way because I, I, uh, I don't have any armor. Yeah, you, you, you um, could get killed. Yeah, like straight up die. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could straight up die, and that's no good. However, <laughs> behind this uh, cover, uh, am I close enough to huck? Uh, a bottle of gin. You can, uh, yeah, yeah. if 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 you're doing what I think you're doing. Yes, that will work. But yes, you could also burn this place down. It it, it certainly could. <laughs> both thing both things are, could certainly happen. Well, but I'm, but I'm not saying no. I I... Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So I reach for. Uh... <clears throat> I reach for a bottle on the. Uh, <laughs> That's fine with uh, him. The low shelf, low shelf. Uh, right, of course. Oh no, no, uh, no, par no party fouls, please. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I grab it by the neck, and uh, I, I, I put my torso into it and huck it over, toward them over the cover, and uh, and hopefully it'll uh, you know just land among them and distract them. Maybe okay. even hurt somebody. Who yeah. Knows? So let's use a range of success roll on this. But if you get a if you get a ten, it'll hit somebody. If you get a twelve, it'll okay. do something interesting. No, he's not lighting it on. Are you not lighting it on fire? Are you? It's, I think he's just literally checking no, a bottle a, of alcohol. He's throwing a bottle with it. It says it's hidden. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. That's uh, okay. Would. Let me. Uh, let me just. I don't know what that was. What was it? I don't know. Let me let me just roll one here. Oh <laughs> my goodness! <laughs> let me just let me just do this real quick. Uh, so what, Wait, what you... did it say? Why is it showing well... his tape rolling that? Because <laughs> <laughs> you have it in highlighted. So let's say because um, we're still cheating. What, what do you think you could? What sort of damage do you think you could do realistically uh, with a with a full bottle of of cheap booze? to somebody, Marcello. Oh. I mean, it could just, like, land straight in his face and, like, break somebody's nose, and, uh, you know, the alcohol could blind them. Yeah. So on. Those things I are mean, heavy, man. I mean, those yeah. things are heavy. I, I agree with this. I think uh, having a, a, a full bottle of cheap booze literally just shatter right in your face uh, is pretty devastating, so you, uh, you take one of them out and distract some others. Wait! <laughs> Nicely done. They, these are all focused on you, and uh, and meanwhile, uh, what what are you doing, Coleman? Um, again, I only have a knife, um, and so uh, what do I want to do? Um, I, is there a bottle that I could chuck? I, you know, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I might I might try the same thing and just. Uh, all right, so let's see. Just don't roll a two. Plenty of cheap, plenty of cheap liquor here. Uh, <laughs> don't roll a two. You take it out of my 1900. <laughs> what? Ooh. All right, that that wasn't great. You hit no. a wait. You hit a waitress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, all right, these two are gonna get a ch chance. Uh, to try to hit, uh, I think they got to get like a 10 to try to hit Lamar. All right, let's see how it goes. Well, well, let's see. You don't have the benefits of cover, but you have, yeah, I think it's going to be a 10. Oh, no. Lamar, you're hit. Wait, what's a pistol? Pistol's 2d6. All right, so you take three. five. It's well, no, three. that's seven. All right, Depends on the pistol. I think it's just. I think it just says. Type of... Okay, I got a revolver, so it's. I don't know if they're different. Oh no, they're. I think they're all three Ds. Yeah. Three D six. Automatic. Yeah, three D six. Okay, so I got. Uh, gosh, that's way worse. All right, you take ten damage, Lamar. You can pick the stat. 
pick the stat. Yeah, so I, I had like, to come out of endurance first. But it you... doesn't matter. Oh, that's any fine. any stat that I take is gonna put me down to zero. All right. Yeah, we'll so... do endurance first. That's a good point. I, I think that's a second. But maybe uh, that, that's Mongoose. Second, second is is the way okay. it goes. Yeah. But I don't okay. know about makes sense i'm just trying to be generous but uh, either way yeah either way you're knocked unconscious you see lamar knocked unconscious boom uh meanwhile oh. it's back to you all and you make it uh into a position where uh essentially if you attack um and my gun's free too so somebody can pick up my gun yeah you Chapman. can you know you can uh, essentially uh, attack normally now because you've got them flat-footed. They've still got their armor on, but uh, it's better than cover. Yeah, yeah, but between my dexterity and the range rat, it should come out to a, a flat and modified roll for me. At oh, least. yeah. <clears throat> Good point. Um, yeah. Don't you have your cutlass? Famous cutlass. Um... I do have the famous cutlass um, that requires me leaving cover. Indeed. Um, however, uh, maybe when we thin their numbers out a bit more. Mm. Uh, but let's let's take a shot. Yeah, <laughs> I got go a, for I it. got a, I got revolver Pop one as well. Either side. I got a total of eight exactly. Nice. Okay, I believe that that is an eight uh, or a nine. I guess with range, right? Short range. Uh, You're yeah. using a said. It's a revolver. Yes, you have a plus two, but there's the minus two. Plus two. Plus two. It's... All right. Okay. So then, okay. So it's basically it's a it's not a wash because entirely because I have a, an eight, right? Or All right. Plus, I don't. Know. Yeah, you guys can roll for damage. You're That's rolling 14. in secret, so you have to let me know. 14? Okay. Sorry. Uh, that was six. Uh, a six. Okay. Um, oof. A six, interestingly, does not bring this guy down. It gets close. Uh, this one, on, on the other hand, is knocked unconscious. And meanwhile, back over at Books. Books, what are you doing? Um, I'm going to... Well, I'm going to take a shot... <laughs> But am I still going to have, like, the same penalty as before? Because I have a shotgun. Uh, whatever it is, uh, whatever your stats are with the shotgun, I can look at it if you want. But let's see, shotgun. Got a minus three, uh, so for a total of minus seven. Minus seven. He's at medium range, right? So that should so, be a plus three. Yeah, that's right. So that's a minus five to hit. So you got to essentially you would need to uh, do a like a twelve. I'm gonna say if you if you get a twelve, you can hit. Okay, on a so I base I have to get a twelve on a two d six. Okay. Um, yeah, it's huh. easy. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Is there anything, like, is there anything I could shoot near them that could explode and hurt them? Um, Are there, like, lights above them? Um, uh, anything like that? I have to pay for damages. So, actually, that's a great, that's true, too, but, I mean, you maybe you could afford it, but there is a chandelier nearby. Uh, if you could hit it, uh, then it could hurt more than one of them and cause a lot of confusion and drive them out of cover. But um, yes. but you need something either other than a shotgun or you're still going to need to hit a 12. Oh. If you got that rifle over there, you could probably do it. That's like a good a point. So, yeah, I'll go and I'll pick up the rifle. Uh, you have to run out of cover to do it. I'll take that chance. I'll run out of cover, quickly grab the rifle... If I could right. make it back to cover, great. Uh, you won't oh. make it back to cover, but I'll, and this is kind of brutal, but I'll just say you just have to hit. And to hit, you got to do an eight. And that's the, that's to knock the thing off the ceiling. Oof, Ooh. you don't hit, but you have a rifle. 
launcher in the open. All right. Next is uh, uh, Mar Marcello. Where do you? Oh, yeah. Marcello, what are you going to try to do? Yeah, I'm time? back here. I'm still back here. <laughs> I Let's get in. See if they are. Uh... Can I peep out and see if they're they're distracted enough from us by the uh, the flanking folks? Uh, that they're not uh, focused on us, or are they still focused on us? Well, unfortunately, they're specifically focused on you because you just crushed one of their foreheads in with a bottle of Jack. So two of them are, like, specifically yeah, trying to fire at you, at you, yeah. Now, you're undercover, so you're yeah. pretty safe where you are. Okay, good, good. So uh, another bottle of Jack, please. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. If you get a 12. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Lucky ones. Nope, not this time. <laughs> not this time. It just flies All wild. Right. Well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Coleman. That's fine. I have to rethink my tactics. But, uh... <laughs> All right. What are you thinking, Coleman? Uh, all right. So, is there anything? Like, I one, I don't know if that table that they're using is cover. Like, if I just kind of charged and tried to barrel into it, could I knock it and possibly knock them over? Heck yeah. Or, or, could, I, or could I just do, like, a running charge at this guy and knock him into the guy behind him? You, you could absolutely try to drive that table into those surviving three right there, but you need to roll under your strength. Oh, ugh. <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> Is it like, where's um, your strength, like a five or something? Four. I'm oh, weak. That's, that's even worse. Yeah. I'm Pro weak. Probably not the guy on the team to pick to go charge and no, like, send um, a table flying. Yeah, I, I'm going to just, then I'm going to try the, uh, the bo I, if there's a bottle, I, I'm going to try the bottle again. Uh, this, this is kind of dire straits, actually, as it turns out. <laughs> Oof. All right. You just started throwing liquor bottles. All right. <laughs> new new SOP. Always bring your guns on shore leave. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm civilized. I didn't think I needed to carry a rifle in a casino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Whoa. Uh, I think we're back at the top. It's them. All right. Now, these two are going to try to... They're only going to hit on a 12. No sweat. Oh no. Sweat. Oh no. This is a 12. Who were they shooting at? Marcello. Because he, he checked the bottle and hit one in the face. Oh my god. Oh yeah? no. This is going south for me. so fast. Marcello, you take 11 points of damage. Oh, that hurts. Uh, well, I take it off of endurance first, right? Yeah. That takes me to zero. Okay. And uh, uh, I take another four off my strength. Oof. All right, so Marcello's knocked unconscious as well. Um, and then, yeah. let's see, these two are going to try to shoot you two. Um, similar thing, because they don't have the benefits of cover, and they're kind of like... Uh, actually, I think they're gonna. Yeah, no, because this all happens real fast, though. So same thing. They're gonna have to get a twelve. I've got cloth armor. But yeah. Okay. So they miss, uh, and it's back to uh, back to you all, uh, Chapman and Bellamy. What do you, what do you do? I tell them that if they want to offer their surrender, if they just give us six hundred thousand credits, we'll let them walk away with their lives now. <laughs> Nice. It's crazy, but see if you can roll under your social s score. Okay. Uh, I got exactly my social score. Is that? I can't remember when you roll under. Is that cool? I can't remember off the top. Oh, of my head. you're you're the man. Yeah, you, I are, know, I you can't. are the judge. Is this a I, meter beat game? I don't recall. Yeah, I can't I remember exactly either. Remember. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say it, it counts, and what it does is it delays these two. And I mean, like, you have a beat on them. They're about to die. That's the thing, is what I'm saying. 
So that works for them, but it doesn't work for these two. Now, that's your turn. Bellamy, what are you doing? They drop their weapons is what I'm saying. Um, I draw my cutlass, blow past the two of them, and start ah. slashing. Yeah, okay, you do that. Uh, roll to hit. Pardon me, gentlemen. I think that'll do the trick. Uh, I got a cutlass of, t of two. It, it's still secret, so I can't see the results. I, gone. I roll a nine, and uh, a raw nine. Oh. All right, let's see the damage. I'm trying to... It's right let me, underneath let me, it. Let me, I know. I, I, oh, okay. Everything's going wrong at once. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay, I've switched it back to public. Here we go. Have I erased the dice? Well, that's okay. Just check, check it and let, let, let us know. No big deal. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. All right. Uh, at this, I'll take a head off. Yeah, you do exactly that. You just chop a head straight off, and um, the other one also drops his weapon. And they uh, now they do something audacious. They try to flee. Like they just try to just bolt and run. Oh. No, so. No, no, no. Now you can you can you all can try to uh, uh, do things. So like Bellamy, you know you're right there. Do you want to try to hack absolutely. his leg or something? Yes, okay. absolutely. All right, roll to hit. See if you can keep from killing him. <laughs> the damage. You do. Oh, I'm trying to hamstring him. You know. Right. Let's see what happens. That big sword. That should do it. That was public, right? That's a nine plus whatever. Sure. Yeah, that does it. Okay. That indeed will hamstring him and knock him unconscious. So you have one captive. Of this. Yeah, I'm going to shout when I do that. Stop or die. Uh, he does not stop. Uh, Run after him. The other two, uh, if somebody uh, like books or uh, Chapman... Uh, if you, you know, Coleman, if you all want to pick up weapons and try to shoot them, you can. It's up to you. Or you can try to run after him, tackle him, or you just let him go. It's up to you. I mean, I would, uh, you know, kind of, if I can run, pick up his, and, and fire off a shot. You got it. Roll to hit. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'll nice. just say that. That hits. Let's see if you can incapacitate him. All right. Is that uh, 3d6? Uh, yes. Okay, right, and that does incapacitate him. Okay. Uh, Books, you want to try it? There's one left. Yes. Uh, yes, please. I'm going to try to try to take him out. Crap. He Oop. gets away. One of them gets away. Can't pursue? Uh, you could try, but uh, you find, uh, as we're running out of time here, that uh, a this Varger is way faster than you. And on foot in the streets, uh, it's nearly impossible to try to keep up with them. Uh, it would be very difficult to do. Well, we've got living prisoners. You have one, two, yeah, two living prisoners. Uh, you have companions that are not doing well. Yeah, you um, got to get them to the hospital. Yeah, they're, uh, we'll talk about some options later, but, you know, three hours later, you the re you both come to in three hours. One of the, the stat that went down first, you go, uh, the stat that it's, that's at zero now goes half. Um, but you're conscious and you're beat, you know, you're beat up. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, the admin of this place, who you know, uh, Coleman, uh, from a from a former unit, uh, the one that busted me. <laughs> the one that busted you, yeah. His name's Hoyt, and uh, he's a former army guy too. Maybe you guys didn't get along because um, because um, I don't know. Maybe he was more of stra more straight laced than you. He wasn't the gambling type, but. 
now he's working in a casino so I guess you can kind of you know who's point who's pointing fingers right but anyways he comes out with uh, you know security guards and everything uh, this all happens really fast this happens like within a minute or two and then they come out right after that you are tending to your wounded and uh, he's like I thought I'd never have to see you again, Coleman. Mr. Point, uh, it has been a while, and seems like it wasn't coming. Every I mean, time I run into you, it's nothing but trouble. Uh, this time, it's uh, these Varger that brought the trouble, not me. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get your friends some help, and they start helping you. And that's where we'll end the adventure for the night. Mythic Traveler is a space western merchant classic traveler campaign in the Mythic Mountains RPG Play Club. The music's by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech and Greg Gibson with Tim Brazil. Classic Traveler is one of the first tabletop role-playing games and the first sprawling space simulator game ever created by Mark Miller and Games Designer Workshop. You can find the free facsimile rules of Classic Traveler by Far Future Enterprises in the description. Mythic Mountains RPG is an online play club that focuses on folk RPGs. Those are the RPGs that aren't run or controlled by some huge corporation, and they don't have some set way to play and ain't nobody can tell you how you can play them. We play them however is the right way, and that's the way we want to do it. The table is the authority. We upload our games weekly on YouTube for everyone to enjoy and sit in without performances, fancy equipment, or monetization. It's just a group of people playing folk RPGs our way. You're welcome to join us, but until then, be safe out there between jumps. <laughs>